right, we're on. Ready, Phil. We're on in five, four. When the clock struck six, it meant one thing for Ron Burgundy and his news team. Go time. everybody here we are about to get into a PVE mission and uh, it's only medium uh, difficulty and I'm doing it because this is a winter map and uh, I don't know if anybody saw the jingles video that he put out today the video on this map it is Friday January 29th and he put out a video about how not to suck on this map so I thought I would give it a try and then while we were doing it um, I would talk to you guys about the patch that is taking place on February 11th. It is patch 0 0.13. Going to have a whole bunch of changes and um, definitely very interesting. So we're going to go ahead and do this battle and while we do I will be discussing the patch notes. So hope you guys enjoy and uh, I will catch you at the end of the video. Right, everybody, so thanks for tuning in to this Armored Warfare News Flash. This is Tanks for the Memories, and I thought today, while we were watching this video, as I mentioned, um, using the tactics that Jingles had had mentioned earlier today, I thought I would go ahead and give you guys some of the information on the upcoming patch to Armored Warfare, which is Update 0 0.13, scheduled to appear on the North American and European servers on the 11th of February. Update uh, 0.13 brings several major features that include a third dealer. There is a new dealer coming into the game to go with the Russian guy and the European woman or whatever they are. The third dealer's name is Zhang Fing and he comes in with seven new Chinese main battle tanks. Very exciting. Um, those tanks are going to be a Type 59 at Tier 3, a Type 69-2 at Tier 4, a Type 82 at Type 80-2 at Tier 5, a Type 85-2M at Tier 6, a Type 90-2 at Tier 7, and a Type 98 at Tier 8, and there is a Tier 5 Premium, which is a WZ1224. So um, that's that's big news coming in for all you guys who are interested in having some different main battle tanks uh, primarily in the Chinese line. They're introducing again the new dealer Zing Feng. He originates from China. Um, Zhang, I guess it's Zhang Feng. Anyway, he shows a knack for working with technology and electronics from childhood on. Later in life he ended up graduating from BIT School of Material Science and Engineering before working with a handful of classmates to build a military technology business where he took a position as head researcher. To begin with, Feng is offering seven new Chinese vehicles to the players with more nations to come. So in order to unlock Feng's new line of vehicles, players must deal a set amount of damage in either PvP or PvE enemies while within 150 meters of another friendly vehicle. So if you want to unlock them in the game, the way to do it is to do damage in either PvP or PvE mode 
to enemies while within 150 meters of another friendly vehicle. So you want to have your pack tactics activated, I guess. Um, there is another way to do it. Alternatively, if you don't want to sit there and try and work your way through that by sticking close to enemies or sticking close to friends while shooting enemies, um, you can purchase the WZ-1224, which will automatically unlock the Type 59. Uh, it is said that Fing is to have more vehicle lines from other well-known nations to arrive in the coming future. So if you don't want to, again, if you don't want to try and uh, unlock this branch by sticking close to friendlies and shooting um, enemy vehicles, you can purchase the WZ-1224, which will unlock the Type 59 at Tier 3, and you will be able to... Um, you work your way up the rest of the uh, seven new main battle tanks from there. Other things that are coming up, major upgrades in patch 0 0.13 includes a new map. It's called Coastal Threat, and I have a picture of the map um, at the end of this video, along with pictures, by the way, of some of the tanks, some of the new Chinese tanks that are coming out in the game. So um, if you get tired of me yapping about the patch notes, go ahead and scroll down to the end of the video there, and you should be able to see still shots of the new map as well as some of the uh, actually fairly higher tier new Chinese tanks. Um, anyway, so the new map is called Coastal Threat and Coastal Threat is uh, basically a town on the Mediterranean coastline that has just started to see the first glimmers of global conflict. Um, the, there's a forest burning in the background, wreckage to navigate on a tight urban sprawl. You must choose to traverse the city's broken streets or wide open spaces of the docks to annihilate your enemies. So again, uh, it's got some open areas in the docks, uh, near the docks, but it's also got city streets. Um, coastal threat primarily focus on mixed movement, enabling players to find plenty of routes to flank enemies or to set up ambushes. So that's a big thing for the new map there. Uh, the next thing that's coming out is they're doing a PVE and PVE, uh, sorry, PVE and PVP system re uh, reward overhaul. So they're going to basically change the way that uh, you get credits and experience in the game for both PVE and PVP. Basically, what that means is the PVE reward system was significantly changed, and the PVE rewards were increased overall. Additionally, PvP reputation income was increased by approximately 10%. Um, when I get more information on exactly how that's going to work, I'll let you guys know. Moving on from there, they have um, changed Matchmaker. So they're now moving on to Matchmaker 2.0. And the information is as follows. We've updated our matchmaking system to provide an overall better experience to players looking for more balanced matches. Previously, pairs, players would often find themselves placed against full platoons and higher tier vehicles without an equal number of equivalently tiered vehicles on their team. This is true. Um, moving, you know, tier 6, 7, 8, 9, um, it is pretty difficult, and there's a lot of really lopsided games. So platoons will now be matched against equally tiered platoons or players who match the top tier in the platoon. For example, a platoon of three tier 8s can only get into a match if the match has three other tier 8s right, so platooned or not. Artillery is also more strictly matched so their tiers are balanced between the teams. While this means platoons will sometimes have to wait longer for a match, solo queue players should now find themselves in matches with other similarly tiered players and balanced numbers of platoons, thank goodness. Additionally, solo queue players should also find it easier to get into a match even at higher tiers. Finally, the introduction of Matchmaker 2.0 also brings with it new server-side controls, which will allow Obsidian to more easily tweak the matchmaking settings based on an individual region's needs. So that's pretty cool. So they, they are taking to heart the comments and questions and stuff we've been giving them about uh, the matchmaking system and uh, balance between uh, teams and games, as well as uh, wait times, and uh, related to uh, the the reward system. So that's that's good news. I can't wait to see how that works out there in February. Also, uh, importantly, they've made some retrofit system changes. 
So uh, there are changes to both the commander and the retrofit system. Retrofits and commanders previously unlocked by progressing through the artillery line of vehicles have been duplicated to other vehicles. So now you don't have to go up the arty line to get the commanders. Um, and that, that would be Freya Holbjerg can be unlocked on the BMD-1. And Commander Juan Carlos Miramon can now be unlocked on the swing fire. So uh, important changes there to getting those commanders. Next, um, the magnetic actuator retrofits can now be unlocked on the LAV-300, the B-1 Centauro, and the M-1128MGS Mark III. So the Mark I magnetic actuator retrofit can be unlocked on the LAV-300, the Mark II on the B-1 Centauro, and the Mark III magnetic actuator on the M-1128. MGS. The gyroscopic stabilizer retrofit can now be unlocked on the M551 Sheridan. That's the Mark I gyroscopic stabilizer. The Mark II stabilizer can be unlocked on the Stingray 1. And the Mark III stabilizer can now be unlocked on the M8. So that's pretty cool. Um, component and crew damage adjustments. Uh, next. Reducing saved component damage. Oh, they're reducing the saved component damage percentage from 50 to 30. However, components will now take less damage if their saving throws succeed. Saving throws have gone up for all components. All components got a 5% increase, except for crew and gas tanks, which got a 10% increase. It will be harder to deal maximum damage to these components. Uh, hit points have been slightly increased for all components except for treads, which now take two critical hit shots to destroy. Repair speed has been increased for tracks and engines. Tracks now repair in six seconds, and engines repair in seven seconds. Destroying an external gas tank now has a 35% chance to start a fire, fire on a vehicle. Destroying an external gas tank now also causes 5% penalty to vehicle traverse speed. Interesting. All right. While the external gas tank is in the destroyed state, there's a 15% greater chance the engine could catch fire if it is shot. That makes sense. So if the tank bursts, fuel can get splashed over the engine deck, and if you shoot the engine after that, it can catch the engine on fire. That, that makes sense. Fire damage to internal components have been slightly decreased. Fewer components should now enter the damaged state after a fire starts. So those are pretty much the major, um, the major issues there. Again, uh, the big deal is the new map, which is called Coastal Threats, the Mediterranean coastline with a port and a city there. Um, the Coastal Threat map is a 1,200 by 1,200 meter map. It's roughly comprised of one-third urban areas intermixed with rolling terrain. While designed to offer players several different sections for head-on engagements, Coastal Threat primarily focuses on mixed environment or mixed movement. It enables the players to find plenty of routes to flank the enemies or set up ambushes. So it's a pretty much typical size map. It's 1,200 by 1,200 meters, one-third urban area intermixed with rolling terrain. And there is a port there um, down by the docks where it's a bit more open. Um, again, Matchmaker 2.0, which is really trying to adjust the teams that have platoons on them, especially in higher tiers so that they're equally balanced on both sides. Hopefully less of these um, massive 15 to 0 type PvP games. And again, uh, some changes to the commanders. Two of the commanders can now be locked on other vehicles. Met, uh, the magnetic actuator retrofits and the um, gyroscopic stabilizers can now be unlocked on different vehicles than they were previously. Um, there's been a lot of changes to component and crew damage. Um, pretty much buffs for all of the, the components there. And um, the big thing, again, the new Chinese tanks. So at the um, end of this match here, which you can see, um, I'm in the Chieftain Mark VI, and we are uh, in that stupid map. This map always turns me around, man. I can never get myself organized on this map. But I'm getting, as you can tell, pinged by Artie pretty significantly here. Um, but uh, this is one of those maps where it really, really does help to have artillery on it. Um, and instead, I think we had a little fox that was kind of AFK, it seemed like, for most of the match. Um, we are going to win, but it is not uh, an easy fight here because artillery found me and decided to just 
hammer the absolute shit out of me the entire entire game. So um, anyway, again, back to the Chinese vehicles. We've got the Type 59 at Tier 3, the Type 69-2 at Tier 4, the Type 80-2 at Tier 5, the Type 85-2M at Tier 6, the Type 90-2 at Tier 7, and the Type 98 at Tier 8 with a premium vehicle that you can purchase starting on February 11th, the WZ1224, which is a Tier 5 premium tank. So if you buy the WZ1224, as I said, you unlock the Type 59, which will allow you to move up the tech tree, or you can unlock the vehicles by um, doing a set amount of damage in either PvP or PvE mode to enemies while within 150 meters of another friendly vehicle. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed these uh, updates, this update, and these patch notes. As I get more information, I'll bring it to you, but I've got some pictures of um, some of the new Chinese tanks at the end of this video. So stick around, take a look, and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Trying to. Trying to. coming. How do I get hit by that fucking guy?
target. Cut. 